can't see it, but I think it's a black bear. I'm pretty sure I heard like a, a growl. Folks, as an update, it's about 11 o'clock at night. It's raining, but more importantly, there's something big up in the woods. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I just made it out here to Lone Wolf Mountain and get this everybody, it is currently 73 degrees. <laughs> you know what this means, right? It means that the weather forecasts that I've been receiving over the last couple of weeks have been 100% off. It had been worded like this, basically a switch had been flipped and we had gone from like summertime into fall and it was going to stay cold. That's completely not true. <laughs> While this does alter my plans just a little bit, that's okay. Next week or the following week, we'll do a cold weather hot tent adventure. Because it's so warm, I think it's a good time to do a good old fashioned truck camp. We'll keep it nice and simple and we'll have a good time. Later on tonight, rain is coming in and there's even the possibility of a thunderstorm. So we'll see what happens. All that I know is folks, it's really warm. It actually feels fantastic, and it's absolutely beautiful out here. The leaves are changing colors. They're flying through the air. I mean, we have a ton of yellow and orange and red. It's stunning. First things first, we might as well go ahead and get the tarp set up, even though there's no rush. I checked the radar. There's no chance of rain anytime soon, but we might as well just get the big task out of the way. All right, my friends, we now have the tarp set up. That is the biggest part, the most complicated part to this entire setup. Some ask why I don't attach an awning to the truck. That way I could just easily set up a tarp setup. The thing is this, I like to go as incognito as possible. 
when I take my truck out and I park in a parking lot, I don't want anybody to look at it. I don't want anybody to think anything about it. No one's going to think that someone's sleeping inside of this truck, even though oftentimes I am. Think about how many adventures I've taken with this truck across the country, parking all over the place. Not once have I ever had an issue. Not once have I had like someone knocking on my window telling me to move or anything like that. And that's part of the reason why. Plus, setting up a tarp isn't that difficult. It takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then you're done. Oh man, chocolate coffee everybody. This smells so good. All right, my friends, it is now coffee time. Cheers, everyone. What I have here is like a chocolate coffee. Like, it is absolutely amazing. It smells so good. When it comes to coffee, in my opinion, nothing is better than cowboy coffee. It is so smooth, and at the same time, it's fairly strong. I'm not sure if you all noticed this, but there are a ton of gnats down here just hovering around my head, driving me crazy. It's kind of interesting. Up at the top of the property, we have sweat bees. Down here at the middle of the property, we have these gnats. I can't take it. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Luckily, there is something I can do about this. Now folks, that is about a million times better, like seriously. 
you could see that the gnats have departed. They're no longer bothering me. Thank God, because that was awful. The entire time that I was setting up this tarp, just crawling all over me, just driving me crazy. I love this time of year and I dislike it as well. For whatever reason, the gnats here at Lone Wolf Mountain, they come out at this time. It's like in between being hot and cold, they love it. I mentioned earlier that my plan for this trip was to do a hot tent adventure. Now, with it being so warm, that didn't work out. Now, talking about hot tents, oftentimes I get asked about canvas tents and whether or not I'm going to review them. And the simple answer is no. I have no plans to review any sort of canvas hot tents, nothing like that. Canvas tents are made for very specific situations, none of those which really work all that well here, with one exception, and that's snow. Canvas tents do not work well in wet conditions, and unfortunately, it's always wet here in the mountains. We receive too much rain, too much freezing rain, and even our snow can be very, very wet. Something else to consider with canvas tents, oftentimes their form factors are massive. So you're talking about a gigantic tent taking up a ton of space inside of your house, in your garage, so on and so forth. For myself, I live in a very small house. It's about 1,000 square feet. And to be honest, the space inside of my house is too valuable for a product that I really can't use all that often. Also, they require a ton of care to ensure that they don't rot. For myself, I'm not interested in canvas tents and that's not something that I really plan to review here on the channel it just doesn't work that well with where I'm at it's kind of interesting I've spoken to people here on the channel who have purchased canvas tents not realizing the difficulties that come with them so they purchase these very expensive tents they find out that they don't work very well in wet conditions canvas tents feature a very 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 low waterproof rating I believe most canvas tents are around 800 millimeters, which is not even considered waterproof. Additionally, you have to take great care to store those type of tents because they will dry rot as well. For myself, for this area, canvas tents, they don't work that well, and they're really, really uncommon for that fact. I've actually owned some before in the past, and that's how I know they work so poorly in this area. So there's really not that many people asking about them. I would say every year I receive maybe five to 10 emails and messages. That's about it. Most people do not want a canvas tent. Modern materials are so much better than those old school ones. I definitely don't want to go back as far as like the technology goes because like look at what we got. Look at the tent setups that we have now. You can have a massive tent setup that's not that heavy, that sets up easy, breaks down easy and so on. Setups that are incredibly waterproof, storm worthy. Oh yeah, I don't want to go back. <laughs> that direction is the wrong way in my opinion. But that's just me. What do you all think? Comment down below. While talking about canvas tents in wet conditions, it's important to know that canvas tents are not waterproof, they're water repellent. It's all about the treatment that they have and how fresh that treatment is and also how well it was applied. While a good quality canvas tent can withstand like a good downpour, eventually it will wet through. No canvas material will compare to a synthetic material, which can be completely waterproof. It just dawned on me, everybody, that we haven't checked the trail cams in a long time. There's no telling what's on those trail cams, so let's go find out.
I want to take a second here and give a big shout out to John. Thank you so much for the little steel chainsaw. That thing works incredibly well for processing small wood around your campsite. It's absolutely perfect. So my friend, thank you so very much. I really do appreciate it. I have two additional shout outs to give. Mason and Easton, I hope you both are doing well. Say hi to your dad for me. Thank you both so much for watching the channel. I appreciate it. The next really isn't a shout out. It's more of... How do I say this? Plain and simple, a viewer of our channel is going through a very hard time with his wife. It's one of those situations where she is right on the edge of passing away. It's actually quite a bit more complicated than that, but my friend Rob, we're thinking about you. Carrie, thinking about you too. You both are in our thoughts. As an update everyone, it is now 5.30. The sun is working its way down. It will be down at 6.52. As it stands right now, it's still pretty warm, but I guess it is cooling down some. The low tonight is supposed to be around 50 degrees. That is gonna feel good and I cannot wait. I think from like this point on, at least for next week, it's gonna cool down. I'll tell you what everybody, I want to take a second here and talk about this wood stove that I just set up. This is from a company called Fire Maple and this is the Maverick wood stove. I've used this on two adventures, this is the third, and this will be the last trip that I use it on. This is a terrible product. In fact, I didn't want to use it on this trip, but I felt like since I've shown it off in the last two episodes, I need to talk about it in this one and really share my thoughts with you all. My review is coming up of this stove, but for those who don't see it, let me just get this out of the way. This is the worst wood stove I have ever used. This is a product that is so poorly designed that I actually wrote the company Fire Maple. I tried to explain to the company just how dangerous this stove is and we'll see what happens. It is completely up to them. It's crazy how bad this stove is. The design on this is terrible. Check this out. Let me show you all what I'm talking about. With this stove, you have two feeding ports and get this, the walls are sloped downwards like this. Because of these two aspects, anything that's burning inside of this stove falls through these feeding ports onto the ground. Next, this stove is laying on the ground. The company says that the ash plate protects the ground from damage from the stove itself and the extreme heat, but that's not true. You can put this on the ground and it can start a massive fire. As you all see here, the bottom of the stove is so hot, plus you have the burning debris that's falling out of the stove onto the ground. And what you have here is a terrible product, a product that is super dangerous. Next, everybody, after two uses, right? two fires. Every single panel, including the ash plate, has warped so bad the stove no longer goes together correctly. There's massive gaps between each of the pieces. Burning debris can fall through those gaps. In the end, this is just a terrible product and it is mind-numbing to me that the company released this. This really is one of the most dangerous wood stoves I've ever seen. We are going to use this one more time so I could show you all just how poor of a product this is. And that's it. I'm done with it. The company knows my thoughts, my review's coming up, and I am done. But folks, do not waste your money on this wood stove. This is a hunk of garbage. I just noticed we have some clouds forming in the sky now. Rain is on the way. From what I remember about the forecast, I think rain is going to start around midnight, something like that. A quarter inch tonight, quarter inch tomorrow. That's pretty good.
right, my friends, it is now time for dinner. What I have here is jasmine rice with Hawaiian barbecue chicken with some pineapple in it. It smells incredible. In addition, I have some sake straight from Japan. I have never had sake before. This is my first time. A viewer sent this to me. My friend, thank you so much. We will try this out in a second. First, we need to try the food. Everybody, this is fantastic. It is so good. I love this Hawaiian chicken barbecue stuff. It is amazing. It's funny, pineapple does not belong on pizza, but it definitely belongs in barbecue. Man, oh man, that's good. And okay, okay. If you like pineapple on your pizza, you're still cool. It's okay. <laughs> I really just said that to stir up trouble. Mm. Mm-hmm. The sun's going down. The forest is coming alive. <laughs> and I sure hope I don't see that black bear that's been roaming around here on Lone Wolf Mountain. On the trail cameras that we got today, I was going through one and there is a monster black bear on there. Easily 500 pounds, maybe bigger. It's a big black bear. Coyotes, bobcats as well. I call bobcats bob kitties. <laughs> Luckily, bobcats, they don't attack humans. If they do, it's extremely rare, and most of the time, they have rabies. Wow, that is incredible. Jeremy, my friend, thank you so much for sending this to me. Wow, that is so smooth. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's really dangerous. I mean, there's no burn, nothing. I think this is probably the most dangerous alcohol I've ever experienced, and I haven't experienced a ton. I don't drink much, but it goes down so smooth. That's bad. <laughs> it's good and bad. That's impressive. Previously, we spoke about canvas tents. Oftentimes, people ask about air beam tents, air support tents, pump up tents, whatever you want to call them. It's interesting to me that these tents are making a comeback after so long. The first time that I saw an air beam tent, 10 years ago, at least, I know the military was testing some out even prior to that. Eventually, they gave up on that technology, namely because you're talking about a tent that's supported by air, and what's holding that air in is fabric covered in glue, and that's it. As soon as a tent is manufactured, it's going to begin breaking down, and that's especially true with adhesives. Adhesives and glue, they begin breaking down very, very quickly. So you have a shelf life when it comes to a tent like that. You're not going to get more than likely 10 years of use out of it like you can with some tents. I have Heloberg tents that are over 10 years old that continue to work to this day. They're absolutely fine, no issues. But that's simply not going to be the case with an Airbeam tent because it's just glue and fabric. It is without a doubt an interesting technology, but does it make a whole lot of sense? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. The air support tents that I've had in the past were small tents. And unfortunately, like the design of those things really weren't that great. At the time, like 10 years ago, there was a handful of companies who were attempting that, but not a single one of them continued on. Everybody dropped it. It'll be interesting to see whether or not air support tents are here to stay or if it's just a fad.
Susie and I, we've been talking about going to Japan to hike Mount Fuji. And I was reading some articles about it this year that have kind of turned my opinion on that. I haven't given up on the idea of 100%, but basically it was talking about how like Mount Fuji is so overwhelmed with people right now. They have so many people coming there to hike the mountain that a lot of it's being destroyed. The Japanese people can't go to the sacred mountain because it's so busy. And I don't want to add to their problems, you know what I mean? So I thought about maybe not going to Mount Fuji. Susie and I would still love to go to Japan, but maybe not add to the frustrations of the locals there, you know what I mean? Because I completely get it, I do. I respect the fact that Mount Fuji is a sacred place. It's definitely something that Susie and I will continue to think about. Maybe in the future, maybe next year, it won't be so busy, or the year after. Sure is nice, folks. The peace and the quiet. All that I hear is just the sounds of the forest and nothing else. Well, everybody, it is now 9.35, and it is time for me to go to bed. I'm not going to go to sleep yet, but I'm going to kick back, relax, maybe find something to read, something to watch, who knows. It's not raining yet, but it could start at any minute. All I know is that it's been a great day, a great evening. I've enjoyed the fire and the sake, and the food was amazing. Super, super good. So, everybody, I'm going to bed. I will bring you all back whenever it starts raining, but good night for now. I'll see you in the morning, or maybe sooner. <laughs> we shall see. Folks, as an update, it's about 11 o'clock at night. It's raining, but more importantly, there's something big up in the woods. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. Maybe climbing a tree or something? can't see it, but I think it's a black bear. I'm pretty sure I heard like a, a growl. I am pretty sure folks that is a big black bear. I think I'm going to hop inside the truck, shut it up. I'm going to let it do what it's going to do and I'm going to bed. I will see you all in the morning. Good night everybody.
it is 8 30. i slept great thanks to the rain i mean i really did it began raining around midnight last night and then in addition to the rain we had whatever it was up here in the woods to me if i had to put money on it i would say bear in a tree maybe climbing a tree at one point in time i heard like a grunting sound and to me it sounded like a black bear but because i didn't see it i don't know for certain this morning i have a muffin for breakfast if i decide to eat it it's still a little bit early i don't like to wake up and go straight into eating that's not my thing for some people it is they can like wake up and have like sausage, eggs, bacon, hash browns, whatever. I cannot do that. I need like a gallon of this first. <laughs> Here with Lone Wolf Mountain, my plan is to never develop it. It stays as it is and you never know. Maybe one day when I'm old, I will donate this to like a conservancy or something like that. Make sure that nobody's going to build on it. I tell you folks, I could sit right here in this spot, not say a word, and be perfectly content <laughs> all day, just staring at the colors of the forest. Maybe we got yellows over there, still some green, we have some orange, we have some red. You all saw with the uh, stove there, I made a huge mess. <laughs> that coffee went from like ice cold to boiling like that. Basically, it reacted faster than I could. And uh, yeah, made a, made a huge mess. So. Okay. Well, everybody, I thought about it. I'm going to save this for another day, maybe later on today, but my plan is to pack everything up. It is time to go. I want to thank you all very much for joining me for this trip. Next week, it will be a hot tent adventure in that brand new Nature Hike hot tent. Wait until you see this thing, folks. It is awesome. I'm super, super impressed with it for the money. I'm going to break down camp here, which is going to be super, super simple. All that I have to do is roll up the sleeping pad, put it in the back of the truck, break down tarp, throw it in, poles in, tables in, and chair. That's it. That's the one thing I absolutely love about truck camping. It's the breakdown. I think I've mentioned this before in previous adventures. My least favorite part of any trip is breaking down the gear. Luckily, with a truck camp, it's nice and easy. With the hot tent adventure, it's going to be in two parts. The first one is going to be with a buddy heater. The next one will be with a wood stove. Two different types of hot tent adventures. The reasoning behind that is that some people do not like messing with wood stoves, which I completely understand. Using some sort of gas stove inside of a tent is a great way to make things nice and simple. But yet, I have to say you are missing out on an experience when you don't have a wood stove. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this trip. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. Everyone, take care. Be well. I'll see you next time. Strength and honor.